everybody in Gator Nation. I'm sorry, extremely sorry, but I promise you one thing, a lot of good will come out of this. You have never seen any player in the entire country play as hard as I will play the rest of the season. You never see a team play harder than we will the rest of the season. God bless. Promise delivered. Since that moment, Tim Tebow and the Florida Gators have taken the SEC by storm. Eight straight wins. Scoring more than 50 points per. Sort of old school. You remember the head ball coach. Warfel, six rings in 10 years. We the sugar. Will new coach Nick Saban bring Alabama back to its glory days? He may go 2015-10-5. Touchdown, Alabama! Mission accomplished. Bama is back. Undefeated and number one. Just like with the Bears. 21 SEC titles. Name it. Stabler. Goal line stand. But that was then. This is now. Urban. Coach Saban. The spread. The spread. The defense. T-Bone. Mount Cody. The passion. passion. Roll, roll, roll time. The emotion. Number one. Alabama. Alabama. Rama Jamma. Hammer. Florida. So, it seems all that is old is new again. The lessons of the bear and the head ball coach have been passed on to this current generation of players. And they know a team is a unit. And in order to become champions of the SEC, the unit must work as one. I said, the unit must work as one. It's top-ranked Alabama against second-ranked Florida, and we welcome you to the SEC Championship Presented by Dr. Pepper, the undefeated Crimson Tide, and the once-beaten Florida Gators. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson. Welcome to the most significant SEC championship game ever. This is also, by the way, a de facto BCS semifinal game. The winner expected to go to Miami. These are two of the great brand names in all of college football. Alabama, so dominant for so much of the last century. 21 SEC titles, 12 national championships attest to that. But they have been wandering in the wilderness for most of this decade. Now they are back. Top ranked, number one in the country, Bama is indeed back. The Florida Gators, one of the great brand names in the last two decades. A national championship in 1996, another in 2006. And in this season, the only blemish on an otherwise spotless record, a one-point defeat at home back in September to Ole Miss. And did we mention it's number one against number two? The 41st all-time meeting in teams ranked one and two in the Associated Press ballot. Joined by Gary Danielson. Not a lot to, to ignore in this game, but give me an idea, Gary, of what you think might be decisive. Well, it's going to be a close game, you feel. So I think you got to say, don't let the enormity of the game throw you off. There's going to be drop passes. There's going to be bad calls. I mean, you're going to line up wrong. You can't overreact to that and throw you off the game. It's the contrasting styles of these two teams, though, that really means some players are going to have to stand up and settle their team down. The quarterbacks on defense for Alabama, Rashad, Johnson must get Alabama lined up against the spread and Brandon Spikes he is the middle he's the presence that has that physical power to stand up to that Alabama rush team the Florida Gators have in Percy Harvin one of the outstanding players in all of college football injured last week on this play in the rivalry game in the rain at Florida State questionable for much of the week he chose he was not able to work out and just take a look at how he has contributed offensively for this team Willie or won't he play for more on that 
Here's Tracy Wilson. Well, guys, I spoke with Urban Meyer before the game. He said Percy Harvin will not play. He spent 10 to 12 hours a day in the training room trying to work on that ankle. But Meyer said it was obvious during walkthroughs yesterday he was not going to be able to go. I actually just spoke to Percy Harvin just a little while ago. He said he was still pleading his case to play earlier today, and Meyer said no. I spoke with offense coordinator Dan Mullen during warm-ups. I said, how does this affect your offense? He looked at me. He laughed. He said, Harvin's the best player in the country. Of course it's going to affect our offense, but we just have to adjust. Guys? All right, Tracy, Gary, how do they adjust? Well, it's huge. I mean, you can line up another guy there, but nobody, as Dan Mullen said, can approximate what Percy Harvin can do to a defense. And if you think about it, Alabama has set up their defensive game plan to identify Percy Harvin throughout the whole game. So it's got to fall back to the quarterback saying, by the way, Florida's got a pretty good quarterback. On this side of the ball, Tebow will be more like the 2007 Tebow running the quarterback draw, the power game, and the option game. Alabama will try to force him to throw. Now, Alabama has exactly what Nick Saban wants at quarterback, a play-action guy that doesn't make a lot of mistakes. John Parker Wilson moves the chains. But what he does better than most people know, he's maybe the best deep ball thrower in the Southeastern Conference. The undefeated and top-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. beaten Florida Gators. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, our entire crew, so glad you could be with us. As Alabama has won the toss, this is the 34th meeting Last time they met Florida won. It's the sixth time they've met in this championship game. I was down in the field, Vern. There's more intensity for this game than the two national championships I've done because the teams are so familiar with each other. Caleb Sturgis will kick off. He's done so 79 previous times. You think they score a lot? Here's the kick. Bounces at the 15 and goes right by Arenas. This will be a touchback. Starting senior from Hoover, Alabama, John Parker Wilson has managed this team very capably this year. Sometimes guilty of getting a little too emotional. We've not seen that in the last half of this year. No, he's been a program and assistant quarterback, but he's got that attitude now. He definitely has earned that moniker as the Bama quarterback. From the 21st and 10, double tight end set. As per usual, two wide outs. One running back, that would be Glenn Coffey. And Coffey will test the middle on first down. Picks up a quick three and a half yards. The lineups presented by Dr. Pepper. Let's check the offensive lineup. Up front for Alabama, Andre Smith and Antoine Caldwell, two All-Americans. It's a very good offensive line. Julio Jones, the talented freshman. Mike McCoy, the other wideout. McCall and Walker, the tight ends. And the running back who just carried the ball is Glenn Coffey. He picked up three at second and seven. Strength to the left. They run left over Andre Smith. And he gets two yards, does Coffey. Ryan Stamper, number 41. One of the linebackers defensively for this Florida team. They don't start a senior on defense. Trato, Marsh, Sanders, and Cunningham. The front four. Stamper, who just made the tackle, the key in the middle, Brandon Spikes and Brandon Hicks, has had a strong second half of the year. True freshman Janoris Jenkins, black, with six interceptions, Wright and Joe Hayden, and Urban Meyer, the head coach. Third down. From the spread. John Parker Wilson back across the middle. Wow. wow, that's short of the first down. Ahmad Black, number 35, delivered the blow on Darius Hanks, and it's three and out for Alabama. I tell you, Ahmad Black was playing what you call a robber defense. That was man-to-man -man with a robber in the middle of the field, and he read that play all the way and was well-schooled by this Florida defense. They were expecting that crossing route. 
Four career punt returns, two of them this year. Memorably, in an early season game we did against Tennessee. Corey Reamer is the up back, and T.J. Fitzgerald is the punter. This Florida team will come at you, but not this time. The return is on all the way, and James runs up. Short punt. Great special teams hit, but he gets out of the first pop. Shot Johnson. He's something. Special teamer and the quarterback of the defense. Chris Rogers was the man who made the initial blow, number eight. A 36-yard punt, six on the return. Tim Tebow and the Florida Gators. Jeff Demps is the starting tailback alongside Tebow. Good field position for the Gators' opening drive. Demps spilled after a gain of three. If there was a quintessential Tebow game, Gary, it was last week in the rain at Florida State. Well, Bobby Bowden called him Bronco Nikurski playing quarterback. And if you watch this guy over two or three years, because he does it all, including getting a block and a tackle in this football game, he, as I said before, will be more like 2007 without Harvin than 2008 distributing the ball. Tebow drills it, caught Lewis Murphy. That's 26 consecutive games in which Murphy has caught a pass. That's a quick pickup of 13. Tebow is joined offensively, up front by another very good offensive line. They're going to go without a huddle, so we'll hurry through this. The Pouncey Twins in the middle. You see the rest of them. They're in the out shotgun formation. First down, 10. Blitz threatened, blitz coming. Toss. There's the option play you talked about, Gary, and it's good with Demps around the corner and to the 30. Well, you got to give Dan Mullen credit. They went no huddle on this and caught Alabama in a weak side zone blitz. They had the perfect play on. Look, pressure's coming from this side. Opposite goes to the right of the screen. They have the absolute perfect play. In fact, Florida has three blockers on this play. It could have popped. And they go no huddle on this first down and 10 play. In the spread, Aaron Hernandez moves to his right. Tebow has it, keeps it. First down at the 16. It's, it's almost like three card Monty. Which guy's got the ball under the car? Does it the right to the left? They switch it, they move it, and all of a sudden you look up one, and this time Tebow has the ball inside. Florida's been hearing about the Alabama offensive line. Well, they got the added advantage of angles because they run that option offense. That was a gain of 14 for the quarterback. And it's first down 10, opening parry of this game for the Gators. Here's Tebow, play action, pulls back, fires it short, diving catch. David Nelson. And that is a completed pass at the seven-yard line. Tebow was on fire in warm-ups. This is a half roll covered well by Alabama, and he drops it off to the crossing wide receiver, Vernon Warm-ups. Tebow has a tradition where he high bumps Dan Mullen. He jumps up and hits him in the chest, with chest to chest. He knocked Mullen right on the ground. Then he turned around to Lewis Murphy, headbutted him. Murphy had to take his head helmet off because he was dazed after Tebow hit him. Tebow goes left. It will be first and goal at the four. And among other highlights in this eight-game streak, after they lost to Ole Miss at home 31-30, they have been so dominant in the first quarter. Yeah, well, they've been dominant the whole game. <laughs> you know, as much as you say about Percy Harvin, and we do know he's a great football player, but do you know against Florida State, when Percy Harvin went out of that game, the score was 14-6. to Florida scored 45 points. So they know how to score without Percy Harvin. Third down. Tebow under pressure, fires, caught, touchdown. Carl Moore, his 
Rams' first touchdown catch of 2008. the extra point as Nick Saban looks up at the scoreboard. Jonathan Phillips, he's 71 of 72 for the year. The one miss was a blocked extra point in the loss to Ole Miss. Nothing wrong with this one. I'll tell you, Tebow bought some time on this one and threw the ball the only spot he could. Low and away, and what a catch. What a drive. And on the Florida Gators have now outscored the opposition 167 to 10 in the first quarters of games played this year. Whoa. Well, that, that's the easiest he's hit anybody in a while. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Right. Build the Gatorade. Javier Arenas, two yards into the end zone, in trouble. Real trouble. This is the sixth time these teams have met in this game. Although Urban Meyer has never faced Nick Saban as head coach. Interesting, huh? Yep. John Parker Wilson, Julio Jones. Breaks a tackle. Missed from behind. He does not have the angle, and he is pushed out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Major Wright caught up with him. Florida has been gambling and loading the box. This time they're playing man-to-man -man coverage with Hayden off instead of man-to-man -man press. One on one, great protection up front, perfect throw, and then if Julio Jones does this about as well as anybody, look at him break down and then reverse his field. He is so strong. I really think he's the pressure point that has to start for Alabama to open up this Florida defense. That was a gain of 64, and it's first down and 10 at the 18. Coffee is the running back. He comes right this time at the 10. Gets a block. Dives for the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Well, it's supposed to be go to the right for Alabama this time. They break the tendency like they did against Auburn a week ago. They usually run left. This time they go right, and Florida was not ready for it. Lee Tiffin on for the extra point. Well, the Florida Gators went nine plays, almost the length of the right. field. Alabama counters with a quick strike, two Wait. plays. One square in pass. And then Julio Jones shows why he is a difference maker. I've been saying all year, he's the best true freshman receiver I've seen since Larry Fitzgerald. And he's definitely the strongest I've seen as a freshman ever play. Open it up, give the ball and run the ball. I thought Florida was supposed to be the explosive offense. 7-7, seven, seven, halfway through the first. Lee Tiffin will kick off. And the deep man is the ever dangerous number 25, Brandon James. This will be James from the two. Oh boy, what a special team play. That was Prince Hall, number 21. In motion. Option, Brandon James coming left. Good pursuit by Alabama. Really good pursuit. That's Rashad Johnson yet again. Now we'll uh, introduce you again to the Alabama defense. Greenwood, Cody, and Dederick up front. The linebackers, Reamer, Rolando McClain, Dante Hightower, 
and Brandon Fanny and in the secondary Arenas and Woodall Rashad Johnson and Kareem Jackson. Chris Rainey is on the field now number three. The give goes to Rainey and the get is one yard. Rainey a red shirt freshman and it's Josh Chapman who made the tackle that time number 99. He'll spell Terrence Cody throughout the game. Yeah he will. You know there's so many variations for this Alabama team. I was talking to Rashad Johnson and all the DBs. They're wearing cheat sheets on their belts and I asked Chad had he ever done it before. He said no this is the first time they have so much there that they needed a little help. On third down the blitz threatened it's coming. Tebow steps up a lot of time fires it for Nelson it's knocked away. Kareem Jackson the sophomore out of Macon Georgia number three. See Kareem Jackson did not believe that David Nelson could beat him deep. He squatted all over Nelson. There's a lot of speed for Florida but you got to know if you're Alabama who isn't fast and Nelson isn't fast and Kareem Jackson followed his scouting report on that one and knocked that play down. Chaz Henry on to put on fourth down and here's Arenas earlier against Mississippi State his fifth career punt return for a touchdown break a tie for the lead that he held with David Palmer one of the stars of the last national championship team. Here's a play and the play is allowed to continue Arenas grabs it at the 49 cuts back that looked like a block in the back at the 30 yard line there's no flag there but there is one down at the 11. On your right number one in civvies Percy Harvin and the tall guy wearing number seven Cornelius Ingram injured knee injury beginning of the year thought they'd miss him terribly and they do miss him but they've compensated. Yeah, that's a lot of talent right there. First down 10 fake John Parker Wilson drills it to his tight end and his tight end Nick Walker is inside the 15 yard line. Well we talked about this in the open. This play action pass game for Alabama is just devastating because you must stop the run. This is going to be a slam right here and then peel out. Now watch this Florida defense just run. They just got beat for a touchdown wide open. Now that's a great call by offensive coordinator Jim McElwain. You just stuffed them for a touchdown. You come back with a play action pass. Gain of 13. Nick Walker is the second leading receiver on this football team. Nikita Stover is on number nine. Here's Mark Ingram the freshman out of Flint Michigan and Lawrence Marsh made the tackle Marsh was on the injured list for a couple of weeks. He's back. They did lose Brandon Antwine who was a reserve back of second seamer at that spot. Second and ten. Seven seven. Julio Jones goes wide to the left. Both tight ends are tight to the left. And Major Wright is cheating that way. The safety off to the corner here is cheating to help to the outside. He's actually taken two men. Is Jones. Ingram. Nothing. Janoris Jenkins. Number 29. There's. Hayden and also Janoris Jenkins both of the Florida corners are very good by the way but they're four five six inches shorter than Julio Jones. It demands a safety help over the top. Pretty surprised that time that Alabama you can see it right there. It's almost a head taller than Hayden. Third down ten. Four man rush they slant to the right John Parker Wilson chased in real trouble and he heaves it well out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. Cunningham was the man who forced the incomplete pass and that's going to bring on Lee Tiffin for the field goal. See that, that's a fifth year quarterback 
and what frankly the SEC does not have a lot of experience at quarterback that saved the possibility for a three point play throwing that ball away right there. Tiffin has made his last four his longest you see on the right was a 54 yarder in this stadium on the opening day against Clemson. This from 30 to break the tie Fitzgerald holds it the kick is up and good five in a row special team set this one up Tiffins three gives Alabama the lead when we return Tebow time that was a great stop by this Florida defense first was first and 10 from the 12 yard line after they got the ball to 25 now Alabama can't let up special teams it's electric anytime something could happen Tiffin will kick off Brandon James is the deep man they chase him way over to his right fields it going right and comes up near the 20 watch it Tiffin has to make the tackle and does there's a flag down at the 28 yard line Tyrone King number 20 is also there end of one and the Florida Gators trail for the first time since the Ole Miss loss that's the end of the quarter 10 7 will return to the Georgia Dome after this message and a word from your local station Urban Myers daughter Nicole just signed a scholarship offer from Georgia Tech uh -huh. where she will join Clark Kellogg's daughter on Played the volleyball, volleyball team. team. Yep. Percy Harvin is not playing because of a sprained ankle. Hand off right side. It's Brandon James. Ooh. And we mentioned Brandon James, and that leads us to Tracy Wilson. Trace? Yeah, that's right. Brandon James got hit hard two drives ago and then came off again after last series. Still dazed. They did the checks for a concussion, trying to lighten his eyes, checked his balance, asked him some memory questions. As you see, he is back out there, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Thanks, Trace. And, and, and he hasn't been Percy Harvin either. He has not really done anything. Second and seven. Thibault play fake has time now watch the pressure from the backside he lets it go and it is incomplete intended for Riley Cooper who had to go down to the shoe tops Riley Cooper is Tim Tebow's roommate let's go to a little bit to Alabama's philosophy in defending the spread we talked to Nick Saban a lot about this and Kevin Steele is defensive coordinator he said number one you must defend the box these running backs line up wide and they reload back in the formation a lot of guys get a corner stuck playing linebacker we want our linebackers in the box to stop the run game high tower and McLean are both in the box right now third and seven Emmanuel Moody is on he's playing a wide receiver top of the screen here's Tebow tucks it runs it watch this collision first down Florida at the 45 I'm, I'm telling you it's going to be the 2007 Tebow game today he's either going to throw it option it quarterback draw it or quarterback power game that's the one system I was talking urban before the game Vern, and he said Chris Carter gave him a call and he said when we played Belichick and he thinks that Saban's a Belichick clone we used to try to cross him up because he knows he plays our tendencies on first down here's Tebow Deep left side, Riley Cooper is there, has it. Out of bounds inside the five. Roommates connect on a huge pass of 51 yards. Yeah, a stutter and go by Riley Cooper that time. Watch Riley Cooper, bottom of the screen. Right here, watch him go stutter and go and run the play. Stutter gets jumped on by Marquise Johnson, then goes right by him, and Tebow throws the ball. That is definitely film work by the coaching staff. They expected that coverage, and they took advantage of it. First down and 10. Tebow, no deception about this, and he is brought down by Justin Woodall, number 27. Oh, you mentioned Bill Belichick just looking at Saban. That's what Urban Meyer and Belichick, I mean, uh, Saban have in common, their yeah. friendship with, uh, with Bill Belichick. 
They both have sent players to camp there. They both talk to him, seek his advice. They have personalities that are somewhat well, similar. Uh, that's yours. You got that one. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Saban had LSU in this game, and then they won the national title. Right side, nothing. That was Jeff Demps, who's gotten stopped much of the time. Yeah, this is a Harvin play right here, and Justin Woodall was playing the speed sweep all the way. Watch Woodall. When he sees the motion, he's taught to play the speed sweep. Watch him come up to the top. He's playing the speed sweep, and he's looking for it. I saw it all day yesterday in a walkthrough. Those quick motions from the outside reloading in, the safeties are playing the sweep. Empty backfield on third and goal. Three wide left, two wide right. Tebow. Got some room to run. He chooses to do so, and he's brought down short of the goal line by Javier Arenas. This was not a called quarterback draw. This was good coverage that Tebow felt the clock ticking and come out of it. And Woodall and, and Arenas make the tackle. Now Urban Meyer sends the field goal team on on fourth down and goal. Jonathan Phillips, who's already graduated, was accepted at the University of Miami Law School. And Urban Meyer talked him into coming back and trying to win the field goal job this year. He's been perfect. He's 10 of 10. He went for a four-game stretch in which he did not attempt one. They score so prolifically. Here is his 11th field goal attempt. Not through, and we are tied. So far, it's kind of lived up to its billing. We're tied at 10 in the first half in Atlanta. 8.59 to go, first half, 10-10. Alabama has come back to notch this thing. AP number one versus number two. This is the 41st time in the AP balloting that a one has uh, met a two. First time in the SEC game and the first conference championship game. On this very date, December 6th, 1969, the last time one and two met in the AP Bowl in December. And it was a memorable game. The University of Texas defeated Arkansas. Darrell Royal over Frank Royals, 15 to 14. Then President Nixon was in the locker room and he awarded a trophy. There was no championship game back then and gave it to Royal. And how about special teams mistake by Javier Arenas? Oh. Well, let's watch this. Catches the ball on the line. One step. It looked like he had both feet in. Remember, we had this early in the year against Florida with one foot now. This should be replayed because if his foot was on the line, that would be an advantage of Alabama here. It would go all the way back. So there is no stoppage of play. And the Crimson Tide take over inside their own five with 8.58. This is a time for game management by John Parker Wilson. And he hands it off to Mark Ingram, number 22, the true freshman. Brandon Spikes, number 51, led the defensive charge. Dare they pass from here? Not on this play. It's Ingram who goes right. Oh, nice run. And Brandon Spikes, number 51, puts the stop to it, but Ingram did get out near the 10. Power football. Physical football from Florida. I think Florida stood up pretty well on this so far in this football game. Had that one pop run. I like what you said. They got their sea legs after I think about they that have. second yes. or third series. Third down, four. Tie game, 7.48 to go, first half. Remember last time Florida had that robber defense that they hit the crossing route on? Same situation. Let's see if Florida does the same or Alabama does. Spikes lined up outside. Oh, there's a diving try from Darius Hanks. Yep. He cannot hang on. It's incomplete, and it brings on a fourth down. Same little crossing route that time. Spikes is the guy that usually plays the quarterback's eyes, but in this defense, he's rushing against the All-American on a speed rush, and Smith handles it okay. The ball had to be thrown perfectly because it was pretty good coverage, and Hanks could not come up with it. So P.J. Fitzgerald on to punt. Brandon James is near midfield. Javier Arenas with the mistake on special teams stepping out of bounds. 
at the four yard line. Well, hold on because this is going to be a big one. Beautiful punt. And it is. It sure is. Fair catch called by James. And his own man almost backed into him. Florida rushed for 317 yards last week against Florida State. They only got 56. 39 of them by Tebow. First down 10. Handoff on the sweep to the right. This is Brandon James trying to get around the corner. Rashad Johnson, he's going to get called for the horse collar. This play was strung out properly, but the speed of James was slightly misjudged by Johnson, and he had to try to grab anything that was available. Rashad Johnson has been a standout this year. He's a young man who was a walk-on from Sullivan, Alabama, little town of 2000. That one cost him. His team, by the way, is alma mater playing for the Class 2A state championship in Alabama earlier today. They played Leroy. Well, I, kn I knew you'd stop whatever you well, were thinking. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, you want to analyze you this? No, <laughs> no, you might. Right? I was. They, are they going to win? Are I don't win? know. The oh, game's okay. been played. <laughs> First down and ten. I can't be the fountain of information for everything. <laughs> you got it. Tebow being chased and has to throw it away. Well, no flag. I don't see where that one was going to yet. I don't either. Dante Hightower was the man who was doing the chasing. The referee was directly behind the quarterback on the play, and he pointed it. I think it was going to Hernandez, 81. Watch the referee. He's going to point to the play. And he's indicating outside oh, the tackle man. box. I, I don't know. Hernandez was blocking on the play. I don't like that call at all. That, that's a bad one right there. He was definitely trying to ground that ball. Second and 10. 10-10 ten, ten game, under five to go second quarter. Play action, Tebow caught. First and goal at the five, Aaron Hernandez, who had two touchdown catches last week. Gain of 22. Yeah, you really can't cover the guy any better than Hightower does. A little play action pass. Perfectly thrown. Hightower's right there. That's kind of how the defense is played, and Tebow puts it right there. It's reminiscent, isn't it, how Tebow won a Heisman a year ago. He's the whole offense today. Without Harvin, he's the offense. Percy Harvin unable to go. They tested him in a walkthrough last night after they cleared everybody out of this arena. Here's Tebow back under pressure again. Good pursuit by the Alabama defender. Justin Woodall, number 27. Well, three times previously, we have seen this little play. Tebow, that was the first. That was last year. And then he did it again against Kentucky. And just for good measure, early this season. So with the old-fashioned jump pass, Tebow is three for three. Second and five, maybe a little too far out for that. He keeps it, heads for the corner, can't get there. Third down. Brandon Fanny, Javier Arenas. Fanny does a great job. He's right there staying and looking for Tebow. You know right now, Kevin Steele and the Alabama defensive coaches are saying, guys, do not go for the fakes. I don't think Demps and Rainey can beat us without Harvin. It's the quarterback. Cooper goes left, third and goal. This is the second time in this ballgame that Florida has had a, a drive of nine plays. This is the ninth. Moody, wide right. They come inside. Touchdown. David Nelson. Percy Harvin looking on. David Nelson, when he was a sophomore or maybe a freshman, was on a cruise ship and somebody mistook him for Chris Leak, the last Florida quarterback. He played along, and for a week he pretended like he was Chris Leak.
seven point game. The difference in the game a touchdown toss from Tebow to David Nelson of five yards. Let's go down to Tracy who's with Urban Meyer. Thanks Vern. Coach the question going in will was how will Harvin's loss affect your offense has it so far. I, I, I made a comment before the game you never replaced them so it has affected us but our guys are playing hard that's a good defense two good teams playing out there. You've seen guys stepping up who specifically are you impressed by. Well, I think our corners are playing well we're allowed to load the box right now because they're playing here. Uh, Joe Hayden and Janoris are doing very well against the corner uh, receivers. You haven't been involved in a close game in a while this one just seven points will you address that in the locker room. This is going to be 30 minutes of great football in the second half. Will you address it. Oh absolutely we're ready to go. Thanks coach. Now you saw the graphic 38 and 3 with a halftime lead. We have reached halftime here in the Georgia Tome. Back with the Dr. Pepper throw for dough in just a moment. Second half about to get underway here at the Georgia Dome. As dusk has fallen, 17-10 Florida. And a moment ago, Tracy Wolfson had a chance to chat with Nick Saban. Coach, eliminating big plays was a key point for you coming in. You've been able to do that so far. What didn't you like from your team, though, in the first well, half? When we gave them big plays, that's when they scored. We also made two errors in the kicking game. We lost our kicker. We shouldn't have tried to fake anyway. So, but it put us in a position that we didn't want to be in. And then we made an error field in the ball that would have went out of bounds that cost us field position, and they scored on that. But I just think that we got to continue to mix it up on offense. You know, create some big plays of our own and control the field position in the game to stop their offense. Will Lee Tiffin be back? Yeah, he's back. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. All right, Tracy, thank you. Lee Tiffin poked in the eye when he made a tackle on a kickoff return, and Nick Saban referencing the uh, fake field goal when Corey Smith came on. Uh, would have been a 49 yard attempt, and they faked it. Didn't work. So Tiffin will kick off. Brandon James, Keiston Moore are the two deep men. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, second half, one against two. This is Brandon James near the goal line. Now farther away from the goal line. He's out near the 30-yard line, first down and 10. Well, Percy Harvin, the decision made that he could not go today, the sprained ankle, they've adjusted pretty well. Yeah, that floor is pretty good. I mean, no Harvin and Alabama played well you know as right. Nick said no turnovers one penalty only two big plays for Florida and they trail 17 to 10. It's been Tebow. You know Florida's run 32 plays 24 have been Tim Tebow 13 passes and 11 rushes. He's the whole offense. Alabama must stop this guy if they expect to win. And he opens in the spread first down at the 31 yard line. Always opens in the spread. Here's the handoff and the cutback play. It goes to the left. That was Demps. Halftime trends, Gary. We see it. Tebow ran the ball 13 times. Eight, excuse me, threw the ball 13 times. He ran the ball for 49 yards. Wilson was under a lot of pressure, I thought, Vern. You know, a lot of blitz packages from Florida that kept, uh, I think, John Parker from throwing the ball away many, many times. It's the first time Alabama has trailed this season at halftime. Second down and five. Here's Tebow moving to his left, breaks the tackle, and then he's caught and dropped. It'll be third and six or seven. As uh, Dedrick and Fanny combined for the stop. Well, Tebow five, uh, I beg your pardon, eight of 13 for 110 yards. I'm kind of glad Nick agrees with me that that was not a good idea to take the fake field. Because <laughs> I know next time I see him, he'll know what I said. I go, yeah, Nick, me and you, we're on the same page on that one. If, if, if you folks listening at home think the coaches don't watch these tapes. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do. Oh, <laughs> brother, third down. Keiston Moore, third and seven. That's Moore going to the left. Here's Tebow. Rush from the outside. Tebow steps up, fires it one hopper at the feet of Lewis Murphy. That's the third time in the ballgame, three and out for the Gators. And Rolando McLean, number 25, with the rush. Yeah, they keep the linebackers in the box. Now, Tebow could have made this throw. The touchdown throw was just as difficult as that that he made. This one was short and a one hopper. Chaz Henry on for the third time in the ballgame, and Javier Arenas at the 25. Both of these teams with great 
punt return specialist. James for Florida, Arenas for Alabama. Nice. Oh, boy. Booms it. Look at Arenas backing up. Caught inside the 10. Wandy Pierre Louis. Couple of years ago, Arkansas fumbled the punt. Wandy Pierre Louis recovered in the touchdown in the end zone for a touchdown. Give me a chance, I'll get it straight. Hmm. Blitz. Wilson. Caught by Julio Jones. Right in front of Major Wright, number 21. And that is an Alabama first down, a gain of 18. When we talk about matchups, Julio Jones is going to go out of safety this time for Alabama because the corner blitz was picked up by Alabama. So Julio runs a route against Major, and you see Major Wright is not comfortable with the ball in the air like Hayden and Jenkins are. He's a, he's a safety. Right. <laughs> they're, they're not built the same. And that 18-yard gain gives Alabama a first down. They get out of a huge hole. John Parker Wilson, play action, right side. A lot of zip on the ball. It's Julio Jones again. And he reaches out to the 37-yard line. Well, 17-10 here. We said uh, when we came on the air, it's a de facto semifinal. These are the current BCS standings. The finals will be released tomorrow night. Alabama, Oklahoma, Texas, Florida. Southern Cal is winning over UCLA right now. Oklahoma plays Missouri tonight. You know who I think has a little bit of an argument? Penn State. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was playing ball well, ball well at the end of the year. One loss. Everybody else had one loss. Yeah, they don't seem to be included in the discussions no. about one loss teams. Here's Coffey. Big hole right side. And again, they crossed themselves. They said they talked about self-scouting. Yeah. And they're running a little bit more to the right than we've seen. Yeah, it's um it, you can see though that what Nick said at halftime is let's mix it up early and then go back to the run. Andre Caldwell, nice job by the center that time, gets on the defensive tackle and makes it work. Get the ball to coffee deep, even though guys are somewhat doing their job. That time Sanders, number 92, is doing a decent job, but you're not going to bring down coffee with one arm. Antoine Caldwell, one of nine seniors on this Alabama team. Play action. Yep. Back to tight end. end. Yep. You can see it. Knee came down at the 47-yard line. Well, this is a... An Alabama senior team, only nine scholarship seniors on the ball club. Right. You know, John Parker Wilson, and we're going to run the, the, the same thing. Going to slam over here, then go to the outside. Nick Walker, they ran it both ways now to the right and the left. Um, sometimes defensive coaches, like Belichick's doing in the NFL with his offense, and now Nick Saban, kind of understand what the defenses have problems with. I bet he went in there and said, we're going to mix it up more. Second and two. They've certainly done that in the early going here. And they've got another first down. This is Coffee plunging this time. Split the difference with Antoine Caldwell, Mike Johnson, and Andre Smith. And, and the gain of seven. And you know what you like is even though Alabama is throwing the ball a little bit more, they haven't panicked. That's the one thing that we heard from Jim McElwain, the, the offensive coordinator for Alabama. He says, I, I have to resist. If Florida scores, panicking and trying to get it back all in one shot, I got to be methodical and run our offense. McElwain is in his first year as the offensive coordinator. Here's play action. John Parker Wilson. A little high, but it's caught. Wow. Oh, boy, Julio Jones. Is he gifted or what? That was a great throw by John Parker. But he is so comfortable. Watch him go out and snap this ball. It's the deep square in. Terry Bradshaw's favorite pass. Off a of play action pass. Well, it's all of our favorite passes. Oh, there you are. The square in. And Julio Jones, watch him get inside, straighten up, then come to the inside and jump up and just snap it with his. He's a hand catcher. You love it as a quarterback. That's a gain of 14. He's got four receptions for 102 yards. Working again, right side. This time it's stuffed. Glenn Coffey, junior from Fort Walton Beach, Florida. 
That was a terrific play. Yeah, he's got great vision. Uh, you know, Mark Kingdom a couple times ran the wrong hole, and I think that's why we're seeing so much coffee. But interesting, Julio Jones was out of gas, and coffee's out of gas. So they got to, now they got Julio Jones back in the game. But this long drive, the special players for Alabama are, are just sucking wind right now. Second and ten. Too wide to the left. They'll try Ingram. Ingram to the five. Close for a first down. Mark Ingram Jr. from Flint, Michigan. His dad was a wide receiver at Michigan State when Nick Saban was an assistant on that staff. Later played for the New York Giants. This guy is going to be a monster before he leaves Alabama. He's fast. He's big. He's determined. Made a couple mistakes running early, but boy, oh boy. You know, Vern, I, I would think maybe Alabama has something here against Florida. They've been running right a lot, haven't yes. they? They've not just busting keys here. Third and a foot. Baron Huber's in the blocking back. They come left this time, and Ingram gives Alabama a first and goal. A helmet comes off. Is that Dunlap? It is. Carlos Dunlap lost his lid. Ryan Stamper with the pass. Well, this, th this game has been as advertised. Neither teams are coming out of their style. They don't give an inch. Both teams are making plays. Both coaches understand it's a long game. Blocking and tackling is going to win this thing. 14 plays so far to go 89 yards. Travis McCall in motion. Ingram, touchdown. Crimson Tide. What a drive. Listen, you don't go to this part of the season undefeated if you don't have some heart. Tebow has it, but this team has it too. Lee Tiffin for the tie. A little bit of a high snap. P.J. Fitzgerald gets it down. Mark Ingram, two-yard touchdown run, and the extra point. We're tied at 17. Well, we saw just about everything on this 15-play drive. Remember, it started on their own nine-yard line, and it's exactly what Nick told Tracy. Let's mix it up a little bit. Let's keep Tebow on the sideline and play Bama football. How impressive was the drive capped by Mark Ingram? 15 plays, 91 yards. They ran it nine times and they passed it six. Alabama did not overreact. There's a lot of things that are going to happen in this game yet. There's still going to be drop balls, penalties, a lot of time. Brandon James is the deep man. He takes Lee Tiffin's kick at the seven, stays left. Finds the traffic lane clogged and the tackle made by Chris Rogers. First down and 10. Steps back. He goes left. He got a foot. Oh, yes. Lewis Murphy. A lift, little nifty move, and he got open for a 34 yard well, game. Well, the nickname for Dennis Haysbert on the new unit is Snake Doctor. And this time he snaked Alabama with a play action pass. From that, Murphy goes one on one. Decent coverage could have been hold, holding right there, but Murphy frees up later and a perfect throw from Tim Tebow. First down and 10 in a game that's tied at 17 under five to go. Third quarter. Pitch to Demps. Alabama strings it out. He gets one to the 25. Orlando McLean, the outstanding linebacker, sophomore. Let's go back again and just go over how difficult Alabama said this Florida offense is preparing for. In fact, Kevin Steele told me, I don't know how they practice at all. I really don't. He said there's three buckets, and then they run four different offenses and three different buckets of formations. He said it's the darndest thing he's seen in a long time. There's the ultimate empty backfield. Everybody spread wide. Tebow goes back, goes in the corner left side. It's got incomplete. Boy, all the shifting and adjustments. 
that Alabama has to do with just one guy going in motion for Florida. And what happens is it's trips to the right and twins to the left. A guy goes in motion, all of a sudden you got four receivers right. He goes back, it's two. It's really, really given this Alabama defense that likes to morph as the offensive systems change, a lot of trouble here. Demps will split wide to the right now on third down. Five-man rush for Alabama. Tebow had him. He had him, but it's incomplete. Carl Moore, the intended receiver. Yeah, that, that's one of the few that Tim has been really off. You did, you called it right, Byrne. Five-man rush, both inside linebackers come. The ball was thrown really, really behind that time. A good throw would have been a play down to the five-yard line at least. Jonathan Phillips has not missed this year. His long for the season is 40 yards. This one from 42 to break the tie. James Smith centers it. Butch Rowley holds it. Jonathan Phillips misses it. Slightly wide right. More than slightly. Three minutes, 48 seconds. Yeah, you help it, Nick. Push that baby out of the way. Travis McCall in motion, number 83. John Parker Wilson play action. He's got his other tight end wide open. This is Nick Walker, who bangs across the 40. This now is starting to remind me of the offense that Alabama used in the opener of the tape I watched against Clemson. When those tight ends caught so many balls early, you can see again, Alabama went in at halftime and said, you know what, we had one good drive in the first half. It's when we threw the ball to Julio Jones. Now they open it up, they have another good drive. They come back again, they start out with a pass play to the tight ends to loosen up this Florida defense. First down and 10, Coffey right side. Wow. All the way to the 37. Well, well, the backup defensive tackles not able to go today, so it's a thin defensive line. More on that from Tracy. That's right, Brandon Antwine out with a knee injury suffered last week. A lot of these defensive linemen came in banged up. Defensive end Justin Trato now dealing with a left knee injury. He is on the sideline. He did go in for one play. Something to keep an eye on. Okay, Trace, thank you. You know, now, remember the analogy we used a little early that this is Frazier versus Ali. Well, Alabama's now, those body punches, those runs up the middle are starting to take a toll, just like Tracy said. Those body punches are catching up. They've opened it up with the tight ends and Julio Jones, but now, Frazier, the body punches are starting to land. Coffee has crossed over 100. You saw that graphic. Play action again. Gets a good block from Coffee. Julio Jones to the 11. They've got this Florida team guessing. Watch how disciplined Julio Jones is. He comes and it's square. He does not round this thing off. One on one coverage. Comes down, fakes it square, right down the line. That, that is so good. Every quarterback that's ever played says, Oh, I wish my guys would run those square ins just like that. He's a 6 4 freshman from Foley, Alabama. He's caught five in this game for 124 yards. John Parker Wilson rolls out. Chase shakes the tackle. Adjustment in the end zone. Knocked away. Janoris Jenkins stayed with his man, who was Nikita Stover. Well, I tell you, Jake, you are right. Because Stover tried to go a change of direction, and Jenkins, the true freshman, made the play. Watch, Stover's going to go right. But when he sees John Parker, Jenkins keeps his eye on his guy and then reacts and finds the ball. Wonderful play. There's another true freshman against one of the seniors, Nikita Stover. Again, they're nine. Will Oakley, one of the senior scholarship players, unable to go with an injury. The other eight giving a lot. Second down. Coffee. Not much 
available. And he's down at the 10 by Jay Howard. Third down. There's on my black number 35. If, if you're Florida now, you can't give Alabama a fade to the corner of the end zone. You can't give them a, a, an easy touchdown. You must make them work for it. And there's Julio Jones to the outside. Now it doesn't look like the right formation for it. Jones in motion. Now goes back the other way. Roll out by John Parker Wilson. Chased. Caught. Throws it underhanded. But Dustin Doe was down around the ankles. No. No discussion here about being outside the tackle box. No, and he, and he got it past the line of scrimmage and out of bounds. So he saves an easy field goal shot. I, I, I didn't really didn't like this call. Sprint out at this situation right here. Too much flow for the fast defense. Julio Jones was open early on this thing, but it really, that wasn't going to work. That, that play was a, 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 a dead one from the beginning. Lee Tiffin, the junior out of Muscle Shoals, Alabama, for the field goal from 27 yards out. Alabama leads. And, Gary, look what they've done in this quarter. They've had the ball twice. They went 15 yards, 15 plays for a touchdown. They give Florida a seven-play drive, and then, boom, all the way back. We've reached the... Oh, we haven't quite reached the end of three. Let's come back for eight seconds. 2017 Alabama, number one, leading number two near the end of quarter. Number three, Brandon James waits behind Keiston Moore inside the 10. From the goal line, James comes right, gets a couple of good blocks. Breaks out of another tackle and has a first down Florida at the 38-yard line. Ali Sharif, number 26, with the tackle for the Crimson Tide. That's the end of the third quarter with our score. Alabama 20, Florida 17 will return to the Georgia Dome right after this word from your local station. We welcome you back to the Georgia Dome as we begin quarter number four. One versus two, 20 versus uh, 17. It's Alabama leading Florida. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson on the first Saturday in December 2008. First down and 10, Tebow and the Gators at their own 38-yard line. And off to Dempsey, tries to sweep right. And a nice pickup for the uh, Florida Gators on first down and 10. But the one thing that Nick Saban and Alabama accomplished in that third quarter, ball control. Oh, man. Alabama ran 38 offensive plays in the first half. They ran 24 offensive plays in the third quarter. And now Nick has this game where he kind of wants it. He didn't want this 30-point game. Remember, Florida has scored 30 points on every SCC team this year. He's got this game where he wants it right now. Second down and two at the 46. Emmanuel Moody struggles for the first down, and he might have enough. Everybody asked me all week of doing the interviews, who do you like, who do you like, who do you like? And I said, you know, both teams can win this game. Now we're in the fourth quarter of this game. Both teams can win this game. And I mean, it, this is just two good football teams. Both coaches have been saying that all week. Now one of the, one of the uh, times when one versus two has lived up to the billing. There have been others, of course. We talked about Texas, Arkansas. How about Michigan, Ohio State a couple of years ago? Memorable games between Oklahoma and Nebraska. Well, here we are for the SEC championship in this de facto semifinal in the BCS, and it's 20 to 17. They pitch it to Demps. Dante Hightower is there, the true freshman. There's a flag. We might have a face mask. Yep. Hightower. Big, rangy linebacker for Alabama, but the speed of Demps. Remember when Rashad Johnson early misjudged the speed on Brandon James and got the horse collar? I think there was a little bit of misjudgment here. He reached out and grabbed the face mask. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. 
second penalty of the game, and both of them were very similar. Rashad Johnson and Dante Hightower. This is a seldom penalized Alabama team. The contrast couldn't be greater between the two. Alabama came in with only 48 uh, penalties on the season, almost double that for Florida. But this one gives the Gators a first down inside the 30. And it's Keiston Moore at tailback. Tebow has it, pulls back, settles for the safety valve, who was David Nelson. He gets by Dante Hightower and Rashad Johnson, and he gives the Gators a first down at the 15. Well, that, that was pretty wonderful by Florida here in Tim Tebow. Watch how he takes his time, looks deep, doesn't have it, and then drops it off real late to Nelson coming across the formation. A very positive play. Alabama had the first option covered. Second option covered. Tebow went to number three. David Nelson has a touchdown catch in this ball game. First down goal. Now it's Keiston Moore and Jeff Demps are the running backs. Tebow struggles, leans, and caught short of the goal line. Man, oh man. That's our best short yardage running back in college football. Look at him take it on, spin off, go through a linebacker to defensive end and ball just a little bit short and then carried over. One of the more inexplicable plays of this season for the Gators is that in that old Miss game, Tebow, with his team trailing by one, faced a fourth and one, and he was caught short. Right. And they went, that led to the very emotional speech that I think we've all seen and heard. Estepinen is back on the field, and it's Demps behind Tebow on second down. The pitch, Demps strolls in. Touchdown, Florida. They reclaim the lead. Well, I guess we know Tim Tebow is not the reason they're 0 for 5 when he's the quarterback, when he's behind, because he executed that drive perfectly. Jonathan Phillips for the extra point. Percy Harbin. All he can do today is hope he gets one more chance to play for the national championship. They're assured of a, a New Year's Day game or thereabouts, a BCS game. Here's the extra point. It's up and good. Jeff Demps, Cornelius Ingram. Applaud from the sidelines. Well, Florida gave Alabama a little taste of their own medicine. 11 plays, 10 of them runs. And the kick. Arenas at the goal line. Pretty good return, huh? Yeah. Joe Hayden made the tackle. First down and 10. John Parker Wilson with a pump fake. Goes deep right side for Julio Jones. Double coverage. Oh, that was close. Incomplete. Uh-oh. Jones down. Notice how quiet it got. Yeah. Try to hitch and go on first down. You can see Major Wright, number 21, come in there late. He still favors Julio Jones' side on every play. Second and 10. Test the middle. Gain of three. Glenn Coffey. Lawrence Marsh, number 90, defending. And for Coffey, that's 21 carries for 112 yards. And remember last time in this situation, third and long, Florida blitzed, Alabama picked it up, and then Alabama completed the pass. What will Charlie Strong do this time? You see Julio Jones out for one play, back on the field. Nikita Stover wide to the left. Coffey the running back on third and eight. Three down for Florida, they bring four. 
John Parker Wilson nailed Jermaine Cunningham with his sixth sack of the year. Well, it was a tackle, defensive end stunt this time that got the Alabama tackle and guard confused. Watch, comes in and then comes around. In and comes around. Both players go for one over here and Cunningham makes the sack. Beautifully designed pass rush by Dan McCarney, the defensive line coach for Florida. Cunningham was a junior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. First sack for the Gators today, P.J. Fitzgerald. Brian Selman will snap it back. And Brandon James awaits it near the 20. Short kick. James from behind. Oh, oh sandwiched. Ouch. That was Selman, number 50. The man snapped it back, who was up high on the tackle. Thirty-seven yard punt. Four painful yards on the return. Gators lead it by four. Twenty. We have had four lead changes. It's one versus two. We have 7.27 to go. A berth in the BCS championship game on the line. An undefeated season as well. Here's Demps out to the 40-yard line. The current BCS standings have Alabama number one, Oklahoma two, Texas currently three, and Florida fourth. Southern Cal leading UCLA out west is fifth. There's Utah. Texas Tech, Penn State, controversy is sure to come. Well, the Alabama defense can't play soft now. They have to attack. If Florida puts a five-minute drive on and scores, the game's over. Tebow has rushed only twice in this half. They didn't have the ball much in the third quarter, but he's minus two. Keeps it this time. There's the pitch again. Lewis Murphy on the end around, and he's close for a first down. Looks like he'll be a couple of feet short. I know, and that huddle. Before Florida came out on the field, Urban Meyer looked at the clock and said, guys, give me one five-minute drive. If we score, we're going to play for the national championship. Murphy. Alabama and Nick must get aggressive here. They can't sit back anymore. They'll do so on this play without Lewis Murphy. He has limped off and is on the Florida bench. Keaston Moore is a running back. Tebow Power here. Third and one. You'd think. There he goes. That looks as if he's got enough. Yeah, and, and it was a perfect three plays for Florida. Three plays, first down. Minute and a half, almost two minutes off the clock. First down, 10, Gators. It's going to force Alabama to bring papal people and try to change this real quick now. They're going to have to gamble outside and go one-on-one -on -one and attack the line of scrimmage. Lewis Murphy is back on the field. First down, 10. The clock runs with 5.40 to go. Moody is the running back. Here they come. Yep, from the corner. Tebow goes right side. He's got a man. Lewis Murphy, huge play. See, Florida's one step ahead of them. They knew, we knew, that they're going to get a blitz. One-on-one -on -one to the outside. You knew Alabama was going to have to do it. Here's the safety coming in. Tebow sees it, and you know you got one-on-one -on -one to the outside. Beautiful throw, ball to the outside shoulder. It's strategy. It's strategy in these games. Nick Saban feared the big play. He said, we need to contain them. They've had four plays in excess of 20 yards now. That one was for 33. First down and 10. Tebow drills it. What a High in the catch. Aaron Hernandez. Boy, there was some pop on that ball. Now, now think about this. That was Bronco Nagurski throwing a fade, and now here's Bronco Nagurski running a play-action pass and gunning it on a four seams. It may not be pretty, but there's a lot of athletes on this Florida team. Bronco Nagurski in both the College Football Hall of Fame and the NFL Hall of Fame played for Minnesota as a defensive tackle and fullback, 1927 to 29. Here's Tebow, 12 of 20 now. 
And it's a first and goal, Gators, with 4.35 to go. Tebow. One yard line. I, I don't take the ball out of Tebow's hands because I know he won't fumble. Although he got, did he get stung here or he's going to go for a play? Little casual chat with Urban Meyer. Troutwine comes around and gets the key block here and Tebow gets it down to the end. Now, bleed the clock. I'm sure that's what Urban said. Make sure we get all 40 seconds out of that clock. Play clock is going down. Third goal. Look how different that call was. Now remember, just a year ago, that would have been a warning. This year, it's an automatic five-yard penalty. This could be all the difference in the world here. A field goal versus a touchdown. Clock still evaporating, 315 remaining. I don't see what's wrong with a warning personally, but that's the rule. Yep. And that was the head coach. Red zone mm -hmm. offense today. Third and goal. Emmanuel Moody is split wide left. Blitz. Tebow back. Tebow fills it. It's caught. Touchdown. Riley Cooper. Roommate to roommate. Look, this guy's unbelievable. Come on now. You can't do this stuff. With that ball, the only place he could do it. He's taken on SEC linebackers and defensive ends and tackles all year, and he still makes those throws here down the stretch. Under three to go. Percy Harvin gives his leader and quarterback a hug. Jonathan Phillips, extra point. Good. I mean, there's nobody really open. And Vern, I don't know. I don't like to vote in the Heisman. I don't vote anymore. I don't want to get involved there. But if you're going to vote, you got to at least pause and think, should I vote for this guy, what he's done this year? What I like about him, Gary, among the other things, we chatted with him a month ago, a lot of conversation. He said, I have a vote as the, as the winner from a year ago. I am going to make an educated vote. Right. And he said, I'm gonna, I appreciate what Harold's done, what Bradford's done, yep. what McCoy's done. Named them all. Named them all. And then he looked at us with a huge grin. And he said, I really would like to throw against some of those defenses in the Big 12. <laughs> and everybody in this league has been out to kill him this year. Yes. I haven't done it. And that's nothing against Bradford and Colt McCoy. Those guys are outstanding football players and will be good pros, too. 31 20. Here's the kick. <laughs> Arenas from three yards into the end zone. Yeah. Taken down at the 16. How could you not go down fast after Tebow called you out? First down and 10. Mark Ingram is the running back. We're near, we are at the two minute level. Wilson hit as he lets it go. Intercepted. Joe Hayden has it. He's down the near sideline. He goes to his right. That should put the cork in the bottle. Gary began the day talking about Brandon Spikes. He was the guy with the pressure. Yeah, Jermaine Cunningham came also. Now, Alabama has three timeouts, so Florida can't just take a knee. But Cunningham comes one way. Now, Parker Wilson has to try to do it. You see Cunningham on one side, Spikes on the other side. That's two big guys. And, you know, John Parker's trying to throw that ball away and just live a play another day and doesn't get enough on it. Can't blame him on that one. And so the Florida Gators, 139 away from the victory, they're going to go into the championship game. And they did so without their most all-around player, I think, Percy Harvin. Although it would be kind of hard to argue about Tebow. Tebow. You know, and, and you said it. Vern, I think you kind of gave a little wiggle room for the computers where you said most likely the winner of this game's in. 
Do we have to follow this football if it goes the other way, if Florida doesn't make it? Do we have to really watch the championship game? <laughs> Boy, no, that's, hey. a, no, that's a move to... I'm not watching that game if Florida's not in it. Well, Tim Tebow, of course, uh, large family. Bob and Pam is mom and dad missionaries in the middle, in the blue. That's Christy Allen. And just to your left, her husband, Joey. They are missionaries in Bangladesh. They've watched most of the games on the sling box this year. But this time, they made the trip back. They're here in person. They'll hand it off. They'll kind of play. Emmanuel Moody up the middle. And Urban Meyer celebrating on the sideline. Oh, he wanted a touchdown there, didn't he? He wanted to get Moody a touchdown. That thing could have popped, and then he got a Gatorade bath at the same time. Watch this. That stuff is cold. <laughs> How about what Urban Meyer's done in his short coaching career? From Bowling Green to Utah, took him to a BCS undefeated team, won national championship in his second year. Now in his fourth year, he's going to go to the national championship again. One minute to go. And the Florida Gators are going to get Alabama its first defeat of the season. And we assume advance. Texas making a case, of course. The Big 12 using the uh, BCS standings as a tiebreaker to put Oklahoma in against Missouri tonight. And look at the computer rankings. That is, I, I just. Yeah, well, we can't let that happen. I mean, I, if Texas, I'll tell you, they got a great argument that they should be playing in that game. I understand that. I believe what happens on the field should count. But I believe now, and I think even Matt Brown would say, Texas's only shot should be should Oklahoma lose the game. 18 seconds to go. One small irony in this game, of course, is that Tim Tebow came very, very close to signing with Alabama. He uh, got a very good relationship with Mike Shula, but on the day of the signing, he announced his intention to become a Gator. Florida has to be careful if there was a fight right at the end of the game. Punches thrown. You could be thrown out for the first half of the national championship game. There is a flag. Looks like the officials are going to side that and not throw anybody out of the game. Thirty-one twenty. Tracy Wilson's with Urban Meyer. I am with Urban Meyer now. I don't think I've ever seen you smile this much. Urban with his family. You knew this would be a challenge for you. You come in, you knock off number one ranked Alabama, going to the SEC. You win the SEC championship. You're going to the title game. Where does this one rank for you? Oh, it's number one. It's number one, and uh, we give great credit to our opponent. They were phenomenal. That was a hell of a football game. Uh, we had some two major injuries we had to deal with last week, so I can't tell. Uh, I told these players I love them before. I love them. I mean, they, they, they battled. You mentioned the injury. Talk about the way they overcame the loss of Percy Harvin today. Well, Riley Cooper, mate, we, we call competitive excellence in Florida. We practice, you practice, practice. You don't know. You might only have 18 catches like he had. He comes out and has a game winner. So uh, I'm just proud of our guys stepped up when a couple guys got hurt. Okay, we can't forget Tim Tebow. Just tell me finally the way he carried his team on his back, especially tonight. Yeah. Does he deserve the Heisman vote? Oh, I, I, I'd, I'd vote for that. If I had a vote, I'd vote Tim Tebow the Heisman. What he means is football team. I think he's the best player in college football. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. It's the final score, 31-20. We had four lead changes in the ball game. The Florida Gators defeat Nick Saban. And the Alabama Crimson Tide, their first defeat of the year. Well, we've got quite a crew here. We had uh, our pregame quartet, and along with our entire group that travels throughout the SEC, for all of us at CBS, for Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson, I'm Vern Lundquist. Good night from Atlanta. <laughs>